how do you choose the right ethernet cable for your wired setup? We're gonna cover it all in this video. For those of you new to the channel, I'm Anton, a power engineer, industrial mechanic, and a Red Seal electrician. We cover all kinds of products and topics in an approachable way for the average everyday person. I'm glad you found us. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. You've decided that it's time to hardwire your device, but you're just not sure which cable to buy. Quick look on Amazon reveals you've got Cat5, Cat6, Cat6A, maybe Cat7, Cat8, and there's a huge price difference between all of the cables. Do you need gold plated? Do you need copper? Do you need stranded wire? Do you need solid wire? How do you decide? We got you covered today. But first, let's take a quick history lesson. The the easiest way to decide is to really pick a cable that has the range and the performance that you're looking for and go with it and just don't think about it. But how do you know what range and performance you need? You need to start by understanding what your internet provider gives you for a speed and then work from there. Because it doesn't matter if you have a Cat 8 cable if your internet provider is not providing you internet speeds that would support the need for that cable. So you would have a lot of cost because Cat E cables are quite expensive and you're not gonna get any benefit. So let's start with the speed of our internet provider. Now most people nowadays, if you have fiber internet, you probably have gigabit ethernet, which is one gigabit or 1000 megabits per second. That's pretty fast. If you're in more of a rural area or you've opted for cheaper internet tiers, you could be on a 100 megabit, 250, 500 megabit, there's some that are like 800 megabit, especially if you're on a cable or a DSL connection. So again, your speed of your provider is going to dictate kind of what cable it is that you're looking for. If you're not sure what your internet provider provides you, the best way to check is go to speedtest.net, run a test with your laptop or your phone right beside the router and see what kind of speed you get. If you have an ethernet cable, plug that into your laptop and run that speed test that way because that will get you as close as possible to what the speed of your internet provider is so that you know kind of what cabling you're looking for. Now the other thing to consider is not totally the speed of the internet. If you are moving a lot of files inside your home between different devices, such as me with my editing rig there, I move files to and from my laptop to that. So I actually have to look at my wired connection inside my house as well, because I may be able to leverage higher speeds internally, even though I can't get higher speeds going out to the internet. So if that's you, you're probably not watching this video because you probably already understand what cable it is that you need for those fast speeds. But if you think you might want to be transferring files around in your house, that's something to consider while we're figuring this out. Now, many of us have heard the term Cat5, Cat6, Cat6A, but you're wondering, well, what does that all mean? The cat in the cat thing is category and that's just the category of cable so category 5 cable category 6 cable category 8 cable and that is an actual standard now anything prior to cat 5 had really loose standards and they just kind of did whatever they wanted cat 5 was the first one that had a real standard the general rule of thumb for the number is the higher the number the higher the speed at a rated distance. So if you have a cat five and a cat eight, the cat eight will carry more bandwidth over the same distance of cable and is faster. Now, if you're looking at cables and you're finding one that's a cat one through five, skip them. They are a very, very old standard. They're not what you're looking for. The lowest spec that you probably should be looking at is a cat five E cable. So if you're looking at cables online, Cat5e is the base standard that we're going to be looking at here. Cat5e is also the most popular cable because it is the first one that has very stringent standards that it has to meet for specifications. And in home and light office use, it's going to support the speeds that you need in a general setting at a price point that can't be beat. They're gonna be some of the cheapest cables that you're gonna find online. And for most people, a Cat5e is plenty good enough. The Cat5e is rated to 1000 megabits per second of data transfer, which if you have gigabit ethernet, which is one gigabit, it happens to be 1000 megabits per second, which is a direct match. So Cat5e is gonna meet your basic minimum requirements. Keep in mind, that is the minimum that it has to meet. In most cases, Cat5e will actually support even faster speeds, 
but it's not necessarily rated and or guaranteed to do that. So if you have 1.5 gigabit or even two gigabit ethernet and are running it through a cat 5 e cable, there's a very high likelihood you will still leverage those higher speeds through that cat 5 e cable, especially if it's, you know, 10 to 20 meters long and you're not maximizing that length. One myth that we want to get rid of is that the longer the cable, the slower the speed's gonna go. The cat ratings for your ethernet cable is actually rated up to 100 meters or just over 300 feet. So if you have a 10 foot cable or a 300 foot cable, it will hit those rated speeds as long as it's a cable that's actually qualified for those standards. It might sound conflicting to what I just said previously where that Cat 5e cable is gonna run faster than those 1000 megabits per second, but it will do 1000 megabits per second at up to 300 feet, guaranteed. What it might not do is 2000 megabits per second at 300 feet, whereas it could do 2000 megabits per second at 100 feet. And that's why I'm saying in your home networking environment, Cat5e probably hits most of the standards that you're looking for at a price point that can't be beat. Then we move into Cat6. Now the biggest difference between Cat5 and Cat6 is that Cat6 offers some sort of shielding on it. It could be in the form of a foil and or a braiding or both. So it'll have something that goes around the outside of the cabling. This is gonna be especially handy for when you have lots of cables or your ethernet cable is run alongside some sort of a power cable. This will eliminate noise and crosstalk. So if you are getting some weird anomalies in your testing, then a CAT6 cable could solve that problem. CAT6 also has a higher speed. It can support speeds up to 10 gigabits per second, but in this case, it's limited to only about 165 feet. Now, many of us probably don't have a run in our house that's 165 feet long, and we probably don't have 10 gigabit internet connection to even worry about. But those guys who are doing intranet transfers, that's file transfers from one computer to another, inside your home network, you could absolutely leverage that CAT6 cable to get higher speeds locally, internally, whereas externally, you will peak out the bandwidth of your internet provider, but you'll at least know that the provider is the, the bottleneck in this case, not any of your cabling. So CAT6 or CAT6e, next best choice if you're pretty anal or you know that you have some sort of crosstalk and or electrical noise noise problems that are causing you issues with your wired network. Now there is a CAT6A variant, which supports double the bandwidth at the same length, but really you're starting to get into a little bit nitpicky situation where a CAT6 cable is probably just fine. If you can get a CAT6A for the same price as the CAT6, it's not gonna hurt for you to go for that, but I wouldn't seek out a CAT6A when a CAT6 is plenty good enough. Now CAT7 and CAT7A are mostly gonna be useless for you, and that's largely because CAT7 and CAT7A use a different kind of connector. Now the connector does support the ethernet standard, so you can plug it into an ethernet port, but the thing you're plugging it into probably does not leverage CAT7 or the CAT7 protocol at all, and so you're not gonna benefit from that at all. You're gonna be paying extra money for it, and it's not gonna do anything for you. So we're gonna skip CAT7 entirely and jump straight into CAT8. Now CAT8 has the highest bandwidth possible right now, which supports up to 40 gigabits per second at 30 meters, which is about 150 feet. The cable always has shielding, so you will never find an unshielded CAT8 cable if it is a true properly supported CAT8 cable, which means it will eliminate all of the noise and interference that we talked about when we were picking the CAT6 cable. So why would you pick a CAT8 cable over a CAT6 cable? Quite frankly, I don't know. They cost more money, they're a little bit thicker, they're harder to manage, and you're not gonna benefit in your home application at this point. Where you would consider a CAT8 cable is in a new home construction. If you are in a position where you have the walls exposed on your house, and you want to future-proof your house, and you're wondering what cabling should I run around through my network-connected house, CAT8 cabling would be a great option for you at this stage because it will completely future-proof you, especially as we get more into AI, AI technologies, 
and implementing that more into our lives, the need for high speed data transfers is going to increase dramatically. Everything is connected and we will start to see bottlenecks and peaks where we just need that data transfer to go up quickly. Cat8 will solve that problem on your wired connections. So building a new home, run Cat8 cable everywhere and you'll thank me later. Now let's cover off the other parts that we talked about at the beginning of the video. We've already found out that shielded cables are gonna be built into the standard that we buy. Cat5 cable, Cat5e, probably not shielded and probably wouldn't be shielded. So those are gonna be the cheapest cables you can find. Cat6, gonna be shielded. Cat8, it's gonna be shielded. So you know that you're getting a higher quality cable. We'll talk about stranded pair versus solid core. Typically, the solid core pairs, all it means is the wire that's inside. Is it either just braided little wires or one solid wire? Without getting too much into the theory behind the wires, the thicker solid core wire is going to be better at higher transmit speeds and data rates than the stranded core wires. There's a reason for it. It has to do with how electrical currents and signals are carried over transmission lines, but it doesn't matter. If you're worried about your data transmission speeds and the quality of the cable, solid core is gonna be more expensive and better. But the CAT6E cable with stranded wires still meets the CAT6E standard, which means you're going to hit those data transfer speeds anyway. So you don't necessarily need the higher cost unless you know that you need that solid cable. Gold plated connectors. Gold does not increase speeds. What gold does is it doesn't get tarnished or corrosion. So if you are outside, for example, in an environment where it gets wet and then not wet, gold plated connectors, great idea because they won't get that little corrosion built onto them, which can cause connectivity issues. If you're inside your house where it's climate controlled, it's not raining in your house probably, it's not wild swings in temperature, you don't need gold plated cables. It's just an extra cost that will give you zero benefit. A standard cable that is clean is just as fast as a gold plated cable that's also clean. You don't need to have that extra cost associated with a cable that you don't need. So what cable do you need? Probably a CAT6E cable. This was a long way to say, just go get yourself a CAT6E cable. If you're not sure which one, put links in the description to some different CAT6E cables. That's gonna be the one you're looking for most of the time for the next 10 years anyway. After that, CAT8 cables will be a lot cheaper. So you can go ahead and get those instead or the Cat 10 or the Cat 15 or the Cat 20 because we'll talk about those at that time. But right now, that covers off all of your Ethernet cables that you could be looking for and answers all the questions that you probably never had. Also, if you're not sure if you should have a wired connection or if your wireless is just fine, we covered that in a different video as well. So you can always check it out on this channel because we love to help you guys out again with the questions you probably never had. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together you'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.